Hi and welcome to Fiber Love Diary. If we haven't met, I'm Trish, and if we have met, welcome back. Probably part of my tribe, and you've already subscribed. If you want to be part of the tribe, hit subscribe down below. You can also follow on Instagram and Facebook if you want to. Hey, whatever you want to do. This is the channel where I document my fiber obsession of prepping, washing, spinning, weaving, knitting, crocheting once in a while. In fact, I'm looking at a crochet project right now. Gosh, there's probably more, I don't know. A couple months ago during lockdown, I bought some Bargain Jacob fleeces. About two weeks ago, I skirted them in a video. They were pretty disgusting. And this is the box. Just in case you don't remember, this is the fleece I'm keeping. I'm gonna start washing today and I thought I would take you guys on the process. So, disclaimer. Before I start, just two little quick things to say. Number one, this is my washing process for a fleece that is not super dirty, not super greasy. So what I would think of as like a great beginner fleece and this Jacob is a great beginner fleece. You might have your own way of washing fleece. I respect that. That's cool with me. I don't have a problem with that. I think one of the best things about crafting and art is that everybody can do things the same way. This is just my way. Do you. All right, I gotta wash some of this. It's disgusting. I'm gonna go through the entire process. I'm also gonna card at least one bat so you can see how it looks prepped and probably spin a small sample. So. I hope you hang out so you can see the finished yarn. I'm pretty excited. The reason I bought this giant box is because number one, it was a good deal, or it sounded like a good deal. It wasn't, there was some risk involved, but it turned out to be a good deal. And I love Jacob fleece and I spun up the last that was in my stash. So I had to replace it with three fleeces. I didn't have to, but I did. We're gonna do this outside just because it's nice enough to do it outside. Sometimes I do it in, but I'll have to voice over because you never know what's gonna go on in my neighborhood. So this is actually our outdoor shower. I wait and let the water get as hot as it gets. And we do have our hot water heater turned up all the way because we don't have any little kids, but please don't do that if you have small kids. They could get scalded. So I believe it's 140 on the hot water heater. So by the time it gets to the tap, it may not be quite that hot. But anyways, I'm gonna use this tap to fill up this old wash tub I've been using for I don't know, the whole time I've been washing fleece. I'll be using Classic Dawn. I have tried other things. I've tried that expensive thing that I'm not going to mention. I do not think it works better. Again, you should just do what makes you happy. And I put in enough to make the water nice and blue, and then I'm going to add some fleece. I just try to make sure it's not packed in here. I found that if I pack too much fleece in, everything doesn't really get as clean in the center or in the middle. It gets just kind of compacted and the soap and water can't get in. But I just want to press it under the water. I do not want to move it around. I don't want to felt it. This is what I will use to drain the fleece without agitating it. So my husband did this for me. He cut the bottom out of this bucket. It's had fleece on it before. <laughs> and this is actually just a laundry bag from like a dollar store. So it comes with this drawstring that has the little, it's not a toggle, but it's like a little lock. So I just put it on and then I drawstring it closed as tightly as I can. And it's around the rim and it hangs down in there. So I'll just pour it through this. Kind of like a giant colander. Believe it or not, this is actually not the dirtiest water I've ever seen. It's actually not too bad at all. So I just pour it in and that way the extra water pouring over it uh, kind of rinses it too. Not as much in the first wash, but later on. 
And now I'm going to repeat that whole process again. This is a tub full of water and I'm going to do another 20 minute soak on this fleece with this Dawn. And again, I'm only going to press the fleece under the water. I am not going to agitate it around. Twenty more minutes and I'm ready to rinse. I'm going to go through two 10 minute rinses in just plain water. Also just hop straight out of the tap. So I'm actually just going to let this drain for a little bit and then I will lay it on this towel and roll it up. So it's a really hot day. I'm sorry I didn't have this in the right frame, but I'm going to let this dry on these old sweater racks I bought at a garage sale. And you can see here, I think you can see anyway, it is just, there is no felting. This fleece actually turned out beautiful. So I know it looks gross right now, but I think it's good to show people that some of the phases of a really beautiful prep look kind of weird and gross. So I'm just going to pick this fleece really well. I'm picking out those shortcuts as I go. You can actually see me pick a few out. And I'm going to run it through the drum carter for the first time. And you can see that first pass on the bat. This is also normal and it's why I often pick fleece outside. So I know it doesn't look that great, right? Just hang on, you gotta see it at the end. For the second pass, I actually split this bat into six pieces lengthwise. You can do all kinds of different things, but six is sort of my go-to for a bat that's not that big. I will do eight if it's a bigger, thicker bat, but this one wasn't too huge. I just like to take each strip and pull it out kind of thin like you can see, and then I will actually just super gently hold it and guide it in so that the liquor in doesn't grab it and just like pull it all in at once. I don't usually have that problem with this carter but I do like to control every little thing because I'm a control freak. Okay, a lot of people will spin it after the second pass. I definitely don't think that's wrong, but I'm gonna go one more pass. This time I only separated the bat into four strips lengthwise. I just didn't think it needed anything finer. And again, I'm gonna pull it out into a thin layer and guide it into the carter. I do like to burnish after each strip. I don't really know if it helps to organize the fibers, but I think it helps to like kind of smush them down and make them fit better on the drum carter. Okay, so now this 
is going to make me happy as far as prep goes. A really good prep goes a long way. So I've discussed this before, but I haven't done it for a while. I'm going to pull this bat into roving. I have Diz roving off my carter, but I don't think it's any easier and I don't think it does a better job. So I just do this. I think it's simpler. Once it's all into a big long strip, I'll actually attenuate each joint a little bit. I just like it better while I'm spinning. This is the perfect fiber and the perfect prep for long draw. I do do a modified long draw. I feel more comfortable kind of controlling the twist as it goes in. There's that word again, controlling. The twist is traveling straight into my fiber supply. I just like to be able to feel how it's going in as I draft. So I'm just going to make an Andean plying bracelet. It is not the same as you use an Andean plying tool for. I think this is easier and I've always liked it better. I can't even tell you where I learned it because I don't remember now. It was such a long time ago. So here's the finished sample. I ended up with 80 yards and I'm going to wait to do the rest because I have a big sari silk order coming, but it is very squishy and I am kind of in love with it. So I will definitely be spinning this up pretty soon. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.